<laughs> yes, sir, you got this. Okay. Um, good afternoon, everybody. Um, this afternoon, we are honored to have the presence of uh, um, Mr. Alvaro Segoromongi, who is uh, a graduate from the University of Costa Rica. Uh, he's working at the University of Costa Rica right now as a professor in the Faculty um, of Agriculture and, <coughs> and Industrial uh, and Agro Industries in the University of Costa Rica. Um, we have the presentation that's uh, going to be presented by Tamu Gala, and uh, we'll open time for him to, for her to, uh, to start presenting, and then after that we have five minutes of questions, so uh, she can start. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to my graduation project presentation. Um, my graduation project was directed towards finding the susceptibility of spodopter from Fibreda to interpathogenic fungi and bacteria under laboratory conditions. Spodopter from Fibreda is an important pest of maize worldwide, and in recent years, it was discovered in Africa and Asia. Its, its common name is uh, for armyworm, and it belongs to the family of Noctuidae. It's a lepidopter, and a female moth can lay up to a thousand eggs in its lifetime of two, um, two weeks. Um, the four armyworm has a life cycle of eight to 30 days, and there are several generations per, per year. Um, the four Four armyworms are highly polyphagous, affecting about 80 different plant species. They affect crops at all stages, and they have a tendency of affecting uh, feeding during night hours. They can cause up to 20% productivity reduction when they attack the plantation during early stages. Most of the control methods that have been used are chemical control, culture control, and biological control. However, the use of uh, biological control, especially the use of entomopathogens, uh, has been, there are limited studies about that. Therefore, um, our study, therefore, this study aimed at uh, providing farmers with alternative methods of controlling spodoptera from um by evaluating the susceptibility, uh, its susceptibility to uh, Balvera bassiana, the canicillium lecani, um, metallism and isoclea, which are endomapathogenic fungi, and Bacillus fluhensis, which is an endomapathogenic bacteria. The study was carried out with the following objectives in mind, which were basically to evaluate the susceptibility of Scodoptera from Hubeda uh, to endomapathogenic fungi and bacteria under laboratory and field conditions. The following specific objectives were planted, which were basically to quantify the percentage mortality, to assess the best treatment, uh, evaluate the foliage damage, determine the symptoms of insects that were infected, infected by in the interpathogenic fungi, and later compare the cinematic <coughs> potential of interpathogenic uh, fungi with bacillus mucosis. Therefore, this study was carried out at Eth University Academic Farm and the Natural Sciences Laboratory. The following microorganisms were used in the study, which were basically two strains of Balvera bassiana, their commission name is, their commission name is Beardos, one strain of Metarism anisopter, one strain of Lecanicillium lecani, one strain of Bacillus fringensis at concentration of one times 10 to the power, uh, nine spores per millimeter. In the experiment, 12 treatments, three replicates, and 10 insects were used per treatment for a total number of three skisti, second to third instant larva. You can see there the, the treatments were used as individual treatments. They are used in combination with bacillus fungensis, then the mixture of all the fungal uh, <coughs> treatments the mixture of all the fungal treatments combined with bacillus fungensis and the treatment control, of course, which had distilled water. The insects were immersed in their respective solutions for about 10 seconds under laboratory, uh, during the laboratory bioassays. And you, you can also see uh, under field conditions, they, uh, they were spread with a knapsack. The data was later subjected to statistical analysis uh, 
of Infostat and Arab, Arab Commander software to determine the variance between the treatments. The results which, which were obtained were basically qualitative and quantitative. The qualitative results that were obtained were basically the symptoms that were demonstrated by the infested larvae. This insect, uh, this larvae here is the Phosphodoctera fungibrida, which was not infested with the treatment, uh, which are basically the endopathogenic fungi. The image A shows uh, Spodoctera fungibrida infested with uh, Balvera bassiana. That's the sporulation that you have seen there. You can also see the, the appearance of mycelium in image B that was caused by the canicillium lecani. You can see the mummification that was caused by Bacillus frumhesis uh, on the Spodoptera. You can see the, the mummification and sporulation that was caused by the mixture of all the fungal nutrients, uh, the, all the fungal treatments combined with Bacillus frumhesis. You can see the effect of uh, metarism anisopia on the Spodoptera frumhebrella. And you, also, you can also see the mummification that was caused by the respective treatment. The symptoms that were observed were basically loss of appetite, mortality, appearance of mycelium, mummification, and darkening. Uh, the treatments that show positive meaning the, that actually happened in the insect. And the treatments that show negative, it didn't happen. So as you can note here from the loss of appetite, uh, for le canicillium lecani, there was no loss of appetite as as well as the control treatment. There was a mortality in all the treatments. However, they, they were different, there were differences in the percentages. Then as for appearance in mycelium, you can see that Bacillus ruinhesis did not demonstrate any mycelium appearance. This is because it's not one of the uh, symptoms that the Bacillus ruinhesis uh, uh, demonstrates or shows. Uh, there was mummification in all the treatments as well as darkening, except for the uh, treatment control. Uh, to determine the most effective treatment, uh, we, the objective that was put was to find the bioefficiency of the different treatments. So you can see that uh, there were statistical differences between uh, the, the treatments. However, there was no significant uh, difference between these four, <coughs> as you can see. How, uh, but you can see that these treatments here are, are, are significantly different from the, the other treatments here. This group of treatments you are seeing here, which is like anisodium, the cani, metarism, and isopter, and the other there. Um, there were, the image over there shows the tendency in mortality as this went by which is like from the third day to the 10th day. You can see that there was increase in mortality uh, per day. The same uh, trend was observed under field conditions. So under the field, under field conditions, you can note that the mixture of all fungal nutrients is still performing well. Balvera bassiana combined with bacillus frinhesis was performing uh, excellent also. Uh, all these treatments here are performing excellent. But if you compare the, the five which are down here, there are no significant differences. Uh, however, there, this treatment, you can, if you can say that there are statistical differences between this, this one and this one because of the differences in number. You can also see the, the changes in, uh, in mortality. They were, they were increasing. Uh, the mortality was increasing as days went by just like in laboratory conditions. The other objective that was planted was basically to determine if the, uh, the different treatments had uh, effect on the feeding effect. So you can see that um, the four, there are actually five, the five top treatments here did not show any significant difference. However, there were statistical differences between these uh, four. And you can therefore say Balvera bassiana combined with Bacillus uh demonstrated the demonstrated less foliage damage. And this was done by using uh, to determine the foliage damage. We use a scale of zero to nine. Zero being the, uh, the 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 leaf with less damage with no damage, and the nine being the leaf with the maximum damage. And you can see that the canicillium lecani here showed 
uh, was showed statistical statistically as the most uh, the, that showed a lot of damage. However, there were no uh, statistical differences between from there to there. You can see. However, if you compare to the control treatment, there was statist there were statistical differences. Uh, the other objective that was uh, put was to determine the synergic uh, uh, potential, which is between uh, the different combinations. And you can see that um, between metarism, anisopia, and bacillus fluhensis, these ones going down, you can see that there was uh, a strong synergistic uh, effect. However, when it comes to lecanicillum lecani, there was no, there's a weak synergic uh, effect uh, that was under laboratory conditions. The same uh, tendency was demonstrated under field conditions, while lecanicillum lecani generally performed uh, uh, lower than the others. In conclusion, uh, we can say uh, Bacillus, uh, Balvera Bassiana combined with Bacillus fringensis. Metadesium and Sophia combined with Bacillus fringensis, a mixture of all fungal nutrients, a mixture of fungal, all fungal nutrients, and uh, Bacillus and Balvera bassiana were well, shown to be the most effective uh, treatment. Uh, Leganicillum lecani, however, showed the lowest mortality rates, both under laboratory and field conditions. The common symptoms that were observed were basically mortality, appearance of mycelium, magnification, <coughs> and darkening. Then, Balvera bassiana combined with Bacillus fringensis had the lowest damage index uh, of 4.67. Then, Balvera bassiana and Metalism um, and Isopla, when combined with Bacillus fringensis, uh, showed the highest signage potential, which was more than uh, 80%. Since there are a lot of ladybugs in Costa Rica, so uh, for research opportunities, we recommend uh, a survey of entomopathogenic fungi that are found in Costa Rica and later evaluate the pathogenicity against ladybird. Then, uh, for recommendation, uh, I recommend uh, Balver the mixture of Bavera Bassiana combined with Bacillus fringensis. Uh, for controlling Spodoptera fucipeda because it showed uh, to be the most effective uh, when we compared the foliage damage, when we compared the mortality percentages, and when and when it comes, to, we came to the cost also analysis, which is better for also for the farmers because they're only mixing two different uh, treatments. If we com if we recommended the mix of all fungal nutrients, that would be a lot for the farmers, and uh, it would be hard for them to mix a lot of different treatments, and this was the best recommendation that we can come up to. Thank you very much. Question starting with our technician, if he has any questions uh, for the presenter. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Abu, uh, congratulations for a very nice presentation. I, I just want to know your opinion about uh, what is the best uh, field techniques to, to use this kind of uh, how do you apply this? Do uh, you need a special equipment? Do you need a special water or surfactant or something like that? Or so there's something, there's a, a, a special hour of the day that you, you must apply to have success or not? Uh, just like uh, chemical control, you need to apply in early hours. You, don't, you can't go apply during uh, afternoon hours. Just like, uh, because first of all, you have to consider the people applying. They can't go during afternoon when the sun is overhead and it's a lot of sun for them to apply. So I recommend you apply during in the morning. And I don't think you need any special, uh, you need, okay, quite all right, you need the mask and everything just for protective, uh, to protect yourself, but uh, they're not really dangerous for you because when I was working, I could work with, I could manipulate them without <coughs> any mask, mask, mask or anything. What about the, the quality of water? Uh, the quality of water, you can use any type of water. Uh, it doesn't matter in anything, you can use any water. For, my, for, the, for the experiments, I use the just tap water and that's the water that is recommended. I uh, don't have to get any special water. 
because all these uh, I, I think all these uh, different all these treatments were obtained from uh, Dr. Obregon's laboratory. They are commercial uh, commercial products, okay. and they, they they use them for applying. So they use them at using in water. And what about when you use a different kind of pesticide, fungicides, and so on? That is that is compatible. Uh -huh. Is there any risky for uh, for for bacillus to use fungicides or any other kinds of pesticides? No. Um, are you asking about the risk uh, after applying? Yes. After you apply an insecticide, a chemical yes, insecticide, yes, exactly. then afterwards. Okay. Exactly. Uh, basically, uh, integrated pest management in involves the use of all the different all the different control methods. However, we're trying to recommend biological control because uh, it's the most friendly one. So you can apply uh, you can apply the biological control, which is the basically the interpathogenic fungus, and there'll be no risk of. Uh, I don't think after applying the interpathogenic fungus, you need to apply chemical control. That's kind of a sure waste of money and. Yeah, I, I understand what you said. But uh, what happens if you don't have any any biological control for fungus, or if you don't have any biological control for bacteria, so you must use uh, uh, conventional pesticides. Yeah. My question is, is it risky to uh, combine or mixing uh, uh, biologicals with conventional pesticides? I don't. Uh, I don't think you can, you can combine them. No. Oh, okay. No. Because they're two different things and they have different yes. modes of action. Yes. Uh, let's suppose you. You will apply this, this, this spruce for uh, for insects, but you have a fungus. But you don't have a biological for fungus. You have to use a conventional pesticide. And then you apply it, uh, two, two days later uh, fungicide, something like that. It's, uh, my question is very risky. You will it will it will risk it for biological? No. Uh, I, I don't think it's. Need, I don't think you the don't two need can it. go. Yeah. You don't need it. You don't need to apply a chemical control after If you have any more questions from the public, um, when you apply biological control, could there be any adverse effect um, on other auxiliaries or the environment that you could think? Uh, that's why the reason why we are using biological control is because we are running away from the chemical uh, 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 residues that chemical. Is, uh, Insect, synthetic insects live. So with biological control, we are, I, they, I don't think, I mean, from the researchers that I, I read about, there were no any research effect uh, on them. Fabulous, thank you for this lovely presentation. I uh, wanted to ask, do you think this would uh, be helpful to control other species of Lepidoptera or even other species of Spodoptera, like Spodoptera? Yeah, yeah. yeah uh, it's actually uh, uh, Bavera bassiana, uh, ba ba Bacillus swinghensis, Metallism anisoplea, and yeah, they are they are they are very excellent at controlling all the lepidopterans. Mm -hmm. However, the canicillum, the cani, uh, there are less studies about it. That's why I think even the performance during this uh, this study was uh, low as compared to the others, but. They are very excellent at controlling all the lepidopterans, and they can also be used to control the coreopterans, uh, ex uh, especially the ladybugs. Oh. Thank you. Congratulations. Okay, we are running out of time. Can we have? I oh, know we don't have time. I think. One more minute. Okay. Okay. Congratulations, Harvey. Very nice. Uh, what do you intend to do with this work? Do you intend to keep it to be under the condition in the library, like some of the books? What do you intend to do with this final result that you obtained? Uh, first of all, uh, 
if, let me talk about Zambia. Zambia right now is facing uh, uh, a crisis when it comes to the four amyloids and the, mo the most effective, uh, the most control method that is being used is the chemical control. And I, uh, what I want to do when I go back home is that I want to use, uh, to start a, a demonstration farm uh, in my area where I will try to, to implement this different uh, biological control and afterwards I will I will try and uh, share with I will share with the local people so that they can also try to use it, the same uh, the same control methods because right now insects uh, the synthesis uh, insecticide use is causing a lot of uh, environmental damage. Okay.